Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the shore. Today I'm going to be fishing down there. Let's go! No problem. Well, I'm not going to say that was an easy one, but we're down. Tom the billy goat is already down there. I'll make my way down now. <sighs> Made it. Got a little bit of a sweat on now, like. No dilly dallying. Tom's already set up. Get a rod set up down there. I'll talk to you about the rigs and the baits just before I cast them out. Whew. <sighs> I've got the first two baits out there at the back of us and like a little tiny bit of a spitting rain shower's come through. So I'm going to knock up another bait and then I'll show you that. I just wanted to get some baits out in the water to be fishing. Now all I've done here is a, because of the descent, because of the descent that we had coming down that cliff, you bring minimal tackle with you. So I usually just bring this little box. All I've got is I've got some pre-made pulley rigs. Some chalk scratching rigs. This mark that we're fishing at here, it's the first time I've fished this area. But looking at it, we've got boulders and rocks in close, and as far as I know from what I've seen on the chart, is it's under clean. When the tide goes down, we've got three hours of the ebb, so we're going to fish down to low and then back up to high. When the tide starts ebbing off, we're going to follow it down and fish from on top of these rocks. When we get further down, I'm going to put like a two hook or a three scratching rig out to fish onto the boat onto the flat ground, onto the sand, onto the mud to see if I can't catch like a flounder, a dab, a place, something like that. All I've done for this bait is I've cut a little section out of the mackerel, frozen mackerel, and I'm bound it on. Oh, that was frustrating. I've just missed a bite there. Nice little bite like that and then bent over. When I struck into it, it just let go. So the ray must have just landed on it, I reckon. I hadn't managed to get it in its mouth in time and I was too eager. Yeah. The rods that I'm using are, my lighter rod is my pen tidal, that's with a surf blaster, and this is me, any fish anywhere, six and bait, and that's with a spin fisher. The rigs that I'm using at the minute, because we've got rocks in close, I'm using a pulley rig. This is, this is the pulley rig all clipped down. So it clips down the bait, so it's streamlined for casting, and then when you when you cast out and this hits the bottom, oops, sorry. When you cast out and this bait or weight hits the seabed, it detaches, and then when you hook up to a fish, it pulls and holds the lead up out of the way. So this rig, hopefully, when you hook up into a fish, is it pulls the lead up out of the way so the lead doesn't get caught in any of these rocks. There's a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to make these pulley rigs. That's the rig of choice. Now, I did miss that fish. All I did was I struck into it, started winding and then dropped it. So I just dropped the bait straight back down again. I'll give it another couple of minutes to see if it comes back and finds it. If after maybe five minutes, if it hasn't come back, I'll bring it in, check the bait and cast out a fresh bait. Reason being is because that fish, cost the bait, the bait's only maybe moved. Six, ten foot. That fish stood, could still be sniffling around in the area. And if there's any bait left, it'll have it. It's always worth potentially giving it another couple of seconds. I mean, at the moment, there's not much tide moving left to right. So although I have tripped the lead out, it's not moving anywhere. Yeah, you can see where the tide's ebbing off now. Give it another maybe half an hour and I'll move down off this rock onto some of them ones down there. A right, nice fat codling or some rays today will be nice. <laughs> ah. 
I can catch these down at home, I don't want to catch these up here. <laughs> of course it was going to be a dogfish. There you go, the first fish is a dogfish, hooked up, hooked up on the panel. That was the top hook of that squid bait there, look. I just cannot get away from these guys. <laughs> nice bite though. There you go. I just cast out the lighter rod on the left. It's got a little scratching rig on, it's got a tool clip down rig. Try and catch like a dab or a flounder or a plate. And the other rod has still got, it's got a, a mackerel and squid bait out now. Just as I was putting one down, the other one started going and I, it was just juggling which was which. Yeah, I'll give it a chance to develop, because if it's a ray, it'll just be sitting on it. Got about another three quarters of an hour to low tide. To be absolutely honest, I was expecting, I was hoping for a fish before. I was hoping that we'd have had a couple of fish on the way down to low. But you never know, they might come in on the feed with the flood. There's a proper bite. Again. <laughs> yeah, it's the same time you might have seen in the background while I was bringing that doggy in. You can see you bringing yours in. Finally. Yeah. Tom's managed to find a lovely female in this. Yeah. Lovely looking ring. It's Back not hard time. to see what I call thornbacks, is it? Just saw that classic. Has it got any on the inside? Yeah, Sometimes plenty. I get. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There's no easy way to pick them up, is there? But I'll tell you what, their eyes are just incredible when it opens them. Nice in the sun. Just a pulley rig. Pulley rig, yeah. Uh, squid or mackerel or? Squid and mackerel. And two, three or cluster extras. So Brilliant. No. Keep it in that rock pool. Leave that down there for two minutes to calm down and we'll get it hooked. Hopefully, a few more fish. Well, it's nearly low water now, isn't it? Yeah. What can I say? It happens. There we are. <laughs> that was what I that was what was pecking about it. Scrappy little male thornback. There you go. He'd messed about with that for ages. Landed on it and left it, landed on it and left it. Nearly pulled a rod out of the tripod and then just dropped it. Yeah. Tell it's a male by these little claspers here. Hooks just inside of his mouth. <laughs> Got it finally. Just coming down on the slack water now. Tom's just knocked out another doggy. All I'm doing is I've got I've got two fresh baits out there. I put put two big fish baits out there. Just because if this is the time the thornbacks are going to come through, I want to try and capitalise on it. 
I like fishing a flood tide. I feel in my mind fish feed better with an incoming tide. Now every mark's different, some, bit, some fish better on the ebb, some fish better on the flood. All I'm doing is I've, I've got one of the mackerel and I've taken the fillets off the side and just cut them into smaller strips. Now I'm just binding one up on this baiting tool with a bit of bait and it. So that when I, when I bring that next one in, I've got another one pre-baited to cast straight out. Then all I'm going to do is take my panel hook, take my panel hook through, right. There you go. Both hook points are proud. A nicely bound bait, plenty of scent coming out. There you go. I'll make this up now and I'll hang it from the tripod so that as soon as I bring the next one in, I can cast this straight back out. Now there hasn't been that much tide on the ebb. I've been able to get away with a lighter lead, but Tom says it does flood through a little bit harder. So I might have to step the ledge up when the tide, when the tide starts flooding. A little bit disappointed I didn't have anything on the, on the scratching rig. The first couple of baits that I put out it did look like they were getting pecked. And yet the scratching rig was out there for three quarters of an hour and come back and the baits are immaculate. I'll stick it back out again in a bit. If we don't um, if we don't start seeing some, some more better fish, I will I'll put the scratching rig back out. There we are. Another another male, actually slightly bigger male. See, he's got slightly bigger conkers. <laughs> yeah. Just hooked up right in the corner of the mouth. But he's uh, got a lot more attitude in this one. See, because he's swinging that tail round like a mace to try and hit me. Brilliant. Let go, there you go. There's the hook out. Get him dropped down in a rock pool up there now. Yeah, that was a cracking bite, that just went. Yeah, let's talk to you a little bit about the reef. There's the bait. Just mackerel and squid. You got, the hook that it got took on was a 3 0 specimen extra. And the top hook in this one is actually a circle hook. The reason why I like using a circle hook sometimes in a chino is because if they pick the bait up and start moving away, that circle clips them right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, the beauty of this rig being it, the weight of the fish fighting against you and the weight of the fish going through the water holds the lead up out of the way. So when it casts out, it's like that. When it casts out, it's like this, and then when the fish hooks up, it's like that. Which helped me bring it in across all these rocks. I wouldn't normally have this camera position, I'm in a bit of an awkward position, but I'm on top of a rock and <laughs> there's not an awful lot of space. I would normally like to set the camera away from the rods and that, but. Get another bait knocked up quick because this might be the fish coming in now. Looks like Tom's into a fish down here. I don't know if you can see him down. down there. Yeah, but that was a mackerel and squid bait. Different types of baits with different types of fish. Like a cod will just be like a nod. 
Well, the rear sometimes, what a rear can do is it can come in and land on your bait. So you'll get like a little and then just a, a bend down or a slack liner. That one that I had there was a, was a proper positive bite. Come in and it found it and then it moved off with it. So the rod tip went. Uh, there's the hooks. A couple of little tips. <laughs> I don't like having really clarty hands, so I always bring one of these. All it is is it's one of the old towels from in the house. You know, when they get a bit threadbare and they get a bit dirty. And I've got, we've got two women in the house. So between my wife and my daughter dyeing their hair and messing about, all of the towels, if it's a pale towel like this white towel, it all ends up with like hair dye on it. So all I do is I take them into the garage and I cut them up into pieces that are like, I don't know, 12 or 14 inch by 12 or 14, like a foot by a foot. And one of these little baiting tools. So if loads of messing around when you're working with softer baits, like this um, frozen mackerel, fresh mackerel is good, it's got a bit of firmness to it. Frozen mackerel just goes like pat. There you go. All bound up nice and tight. That is a 3 0 specimen extra, and that is a 4 0 mutsu circle. Slide it off the towel, and there's your mackerel and squid bait. Both hook points proud, ready to be cast out the next time I bring one in. Which hopefully might not be too long. go that's them fish coming on the feed now what was I saying about tell you what I'll chuck that other bait out and I'll talk to you about this because there's a couple of things to note about this fish Where? yeah that's a stunner that one cracking little ray That, the bite that I got off that one there was a proper slack liner bite. I'm trying to get myself <laughs> so I'm not still in the way of it. So you can see the rods behind me. Oh. Is that any better? Yeah, maybe. That was a proper slack liner bite. So as in we got like a dump and it strung up and the line fell slack. So when I looked up, the line was just laid all over the place. So that's why I had to wind down real quick. Two things happened there. First off, because I missed the fish, because I missed the initial bite. It come in closer. So I really had to get it up out of the rocks. If that had been on the lighter rod, I might not have got that one out. Because although the lead was lifted up out of the way, the fish was in the rocks. Now this guy has got one of the prettiest and yet one of the thorniest tails I've ever seen. The line, here, And there has been chaffed up a little bit on the rocks on the way in. But just like when I was saying about fish picking up the bait and running off and the circle taking them, it's the circle hook that's had this one. That's perfect. Look how thorny his tail is, that is incredible.
Yeah. Tell you what, you wouldn't like that wrapped around your face, would you? But also, he's got stacks of thorns on his belly. They don't always have thorns on their stomachs. A little female. There you go, look. There's the bottom hook. And the circle hook in the pedal has picked it up right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect. Be mindful of them though, because they are thorny everywhere. Juicy mackerel bait. Just as we decided that we're going to move me off that rock there, because you can see the tide coming in, this rod decided to go. It was a good job that Tom was there to help us. But yeah, there's another one. Here's some of the thornbacks for the dogfish that I've had. Just put them in this rock pool here. See the colour variation between the legs of that one and that one. Both come off the same ground, both the same size, and yet almost completely different, aren't they? And a little dogfish. That tide will be up in here within a couple of minutes. As I kind of said, I thought the fish were going to come on the feed as the tide started flooding in. And yeah, we're, we're into the first hour of the flood and I've had fish, fish, fish. The last couple of fish have come on just straight mackerel, just plain mackerel. I'm adding a bit of squid to this one just because it was a bit of a small bit. The bait that I had the last fish on come back and it was half all right. It wasn't good enough to just send straight back out, so all I've done is I've just beefed it up with a little bit of squid. Uh, just lash the squid to the back of it. As the session goes on and we start getting higher and higher up to high water, it's, become, it's going to become more difficult to use the lighter rod. Just because them big rocks that were down here, that you could see earlier on, they're going to be just under the water. And I'm going I'm to need to bully the fish up onto the surface, kind of skim it in over, and I'm going to risk losing fish into them rocks. So I think the next bait change, I'm going to take the lighter rod in, put another heavy rod out. There you go. I haven't seen any codlings yet. Oh, it, was a, it was a bit of a punt in the dark, hoping for a codling. I'm keen to catch some rays, I mean I don't mind catching rays. We've, we've put them all into a big rock pool so we can compare them all so you can see the, the uh, variation in colour and thorns and all in the same ground you would expect them all to be pretty much the same but they're, they're almost like a thumbprint, there's no two the same. Tom's put a bit of pressure, <laughs> he's put a bit of pressure on himself. Tom's more of a shore angler whereas I'm a boat angler. Like when we go out on the boat it's, it's understandable that I've got the edge on him. He's, uh, yeah, I've caught more fish than him today, which is, which is rare. I fish with Tom all over the world. I've done quite a few uh, big skate videos and also videos in Madeira and Foot Adventure with Tom. The tide's moving back all the time. 
John would just come and sat with me and he was saying, well, what do you want to do here? Because we've got, got like, all the way up there to climb. And to be honest, it's not fishing very well. I'm just thinking, wow, well, should, we, should we push on and go to another mark? Just saw up the corner of his eye, Tom's rod's just gone. I'll tell you what, it was like a gazelle. I think after spending all day trying to catch thornback rays. Put a scratching rig out now to try and catch a dab. I've got a thornback rig. Yeah. Put a scratching rig out to try and catch a dab or a place or a flounder. The only problem here is, like I was saying as we're coming up to higher water, all them rocks that we were down there fishing over, you've got to bring that fish over. It found itself. I'm going to don't try and change the angle, it's just going to try and swim out. I'm going to swim out, it's like 50 50. Sometimes you make it a lot worse yeah. or a lot better. Sometimes you can do that if you, if you hit into a rock or a ledge, if you give it a little bit of slack, the fish can turn around and swim back. It works. Like that there. Because Tom was bringing it this way and it snagged up, he stopped and the fish swam that way, freed the snag up. Because he's only got little tiny hooks and real light line on there for the, for the scratching bit. Oh my god. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to, to go down there and just handball it up or what? Yeah, I think so. I think we'll just slide it down here for you. This is where a big wave comes and washes me straight in. There you go. Yep. One sec. Right, lead's all yours. Yeah. Fingers crossed. That means that they're starting to come back on the feed again. Because we've had like a, an hour, maybe an hour and a half, just dead. <laughs> what was that there? Was that blacks and a little bit of mackerel? A little bit of mackerel, a bit of black, yeah. yeah. Tell you what, them little them teeth on there, yeah. No, they don't look back. like much, but the, when they get out of here, they don't have to you up. Same there, look at these. Well done. I might go down and freshen my baits up now. Tweezers. Just flat to the seabed, aren't they? These here are the outlets for its gills. You can see by their body shape rays, they're completely flat and their mouths on the underside, so they're feeding on everything on the seabed. So if you're going to catch one, your bait needs to be tight on the seabed. Anything, I mean, we were catching these on fish baits and squid, but crab, and worm, clams, anything like that, anything present on the seabed, what you're going to pick up these rays with. Some of the ones that added in this pool down here, they've spat up a load of clams. Let's get them baits freshened up. That one there was a long time coming and completely different than all the other ones that we've had so far. This one's really pale. Turn you around. No. This one's really pale and hardly any thorns. There's the bit. Change this camera angle because it's washing me out. Perfect. Again, this perfectly illustrates how that circle look has picked it up. Now look. 
It doesn't even just through the membrane inside of its lip. Beautiful, aren't they? Let's get it unhooked. I think Tom's managed it. I was saying earlier on that you know, Tom usually thrashes me every time we go shore fishing. And it's become well, tied on species. That's why we've got the scratching rigs out to try for another one. That's the little dab. Nice little dab. They're, um, anybody who didn't know that was a dab, as soon as they saw them orange spots on there, they would say, oh, it's a place. Yeah, but, yeah. Tell by how smooth that way, rough that way. And if I can just pour it a second, dabs, when you look at them, practically see through. Nicely done, well done, mate. Very well behaved, Dab. Oh, just a silly <laughs> What was that? Just a little two up clip down rig? Yeah, two up clip down, bit of squid and a bit of uh, flax. Brilliant. I'll tell you what, I'll get a photo of that. Oh, oh he's thrown down the gauntlet now. I'll show you a comparison really quick about these stormback rays. These, normally I would say that they will adapt to their, their environment. So this guy, because he's got a motley colour, will probably come over like bits of shingle, bits of broken shell, bits of stone. And yet this one has come out from exactly the same place, and yet totally different colour, isn't it? These are perfectly happy there in that rock pole until the tide comes in. Oh, looks like Tom's got a bite over there. I don't know if you can see him. I think we are going to finish it up down here. I mean, the fish, we're, we're chipping away at them. They're not mad on the feed, but we are chipping away. Sun's come out. I reckon we're going to have maybe about 45 minutes to an hour before we get pushed off these rocks. I'm just going to stop and have another bite to eat. People who watch the videos will know that it's a bit of a running joke at the minute about my sandwiches. You can tell that I'm making my own sandwiches at the minute because I haven't got any. I'm eating boiled eggs and biltong. <laughs> now that the sun's come out, it's lovely down here. It is absolutely lovely. Did go away, did he? They do seem to be quite finicky. Tom said, times that he's come down here before, you can't keep a bait in the water for the thorn back. We've, uh, we've chipped away at them. At the moment, it is all still to play for. Now, Tom is winning, <laughs> winning on species with that dab, but I'm winning on number of fish. I think we've had nine thorn backs, and I've had, I think I've had seven of them. Dogfish, we've, had, well, we've probably had about eight or nine dogfish. Bait robber. It's getting like a real tentative pluck and that was obviously what it was. Velvet swimming crab. You can let go now. Yeah, that bait there is almost immaculate and it's been out there for another 45 minutes. It must just be a couple of fish just moving through. Fresh bait tab. You sneaking one out on me up here, are you? Sorry? You sneaking one out? Oh, By keeping a rod tip as high as he can, try to keep the fish up. Away from the rocks. There you go. Another bonny fish, mate. Well done. I did have a fish on there for a period of time, but pulled into the snag, pulled the fish off because they're only tiny hooks. Now look. 
it's only little teeny weeny hooks. So yeah, that was my <laughs> that was my opportunity for evening the score. I'll take that with us and stick that in a bin. We have come to the end. The tide has pushed us off the rocks. We didn't catch any codlings, but we had a great day's fishing anyway. And we ended up with a dozen rays, loads of dogfish, a dab. Yeah. We'll make it back up there now. I hope you enjoyed joining us. <coughs> I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.